first half of calculus, first semester of first year calculus is looking at tangent lines and their relationships uh, to curves, instantaneous rates of change. We started looking at that at the beginning of this section. We're going to come back around to this now. Um, remember, if you you can look at the average rate of change of something between two points, and you can look at the instantaneous rate of change of something. Right? This was the first thing we looked at here. Uh, we looked at it with a real situation. This is just a sort of a random function here, and we're going to look at instantaneous rate of change and average rate of change. To find this average rate of change, all you need is the starting values and the ending values for something. If you want to know the change in this function over that interval, if you know the starting and ending x value, like you know that you're starting at 1 and you're going to end at 3, all you need to know is, well, what's the y value for this? Where is this point, right? So if you look at a graph of that, can you create a graph of that here? I'll stop this for a second. So if you're trying to create a graph of this function here, x cubed minus x. If we only want from 1 to 3, I'll just go from 0 to 4.7, leave it at that. But it uh, has to go up quite a bit, right? Because 3, what's the, what's the y value going to be at 3? 3 to the third, 27 minus that, 24 or something. So if we go negative 5 to 30 or something like that. So this is part of it, right? There's the other part of it on the other side of the axis that I'm not l looking at right now because I want to know the change from 1 to 3. All right, But there is, of course, the other side of the thing. You're looking for you're looking for the difference between we want this value here down at one. Incidentally, you can you can always just do this calculate value at one, then you can hit three, then you can hit two. You don't have to keep hitting second calc value if you're using this. You can just keep hitting numbers and it'll switch to different ones. Does that make sense to you? Save some time. So there's, there's the value here, which we could figure that out, right? One, one cubed minus one is zero. Okay, so my graph, if, if you have a uh, simple looking graph here, it looks something like that. For the window I had here, zero to 4.7. Incidentally, if you're ever drawing a graph, put a scale down, right? Whatever your scale is, just put them on the ends of the axes. This, this axis is right here. You could draw it in there, but if you just put the numbers on the ends of the axes, it shows how big your graph is. And I think the graph looks something like this, right? Something like that. The two points you have here, this is 1, 0. And another point up here would be 3, what is that point? 3, 24. The average rate of change is just what's the slope of the line through those two points. Okay, we've had that before. The average rate of change is just what's the difference between these two. It's the slope. Okay, it's the change in y over change in x. So if you want average rate of change, or in other words, the slope. Change in y, change in x, or of course you could, you know, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, or you could say if it's f of x, f at x2 minus f at x1, right? Don't get mixed up because of the notation, right? It's just the difference in the y values divided by difference in the x values. So now that I've put a whole bunch of expressions down, you could actually put the numbers in. The numbers are sort of secondary at this point, but what are the numbers? 24 minus 0 over 3 minus 1, right? 24 over 2, 12, okay? All that's saying for every 1 across, it moves up 12, right? If this was, you know, if the, if the vertical was distance and this bottom was time, meters and seconds, this would be meters per second. Okay? There's no, there's no uh, units given here, so we don't know, but whatever they happen to be. 
All that's saying, of course, is that for every 1 over, this goes up 12. Okay, that's all a slope is, of course, you already know that. This, this is also, this red line here is called a secant line. Okay, a secant line is just a line between two points. Now we're going to compare that with instantaneous um, change, which again, we've already done before, right? But the instantaneous change, the change at a specific point, not between two points. Okay, so part B here, um, looking at a tangent to a curve, not a secant to a curve. Again, the words here, tangent is something that touches a curve at one point. A secant is a line through two points on a curve. Okay, I don't know, I mean, make sure you are okay with those words. Let's start again with that picture, doing such a great job of it. That's almost good. Just make the point bigger. This is a secant line. This one right here is going to be a tangent line. Tangent. Okay, one point or two points. The tangent line is going to be uh, to, is going to go with the instantaneous change. The secant line is going to go with the average change. Um, if you read this here, we define the rate at which the value of the function of this is changing. So rate that it's changing with respect to x at any particular value, at a single value here, it is the limit as these two points get closer and closer together. Okay, that's what the that's what the tan the slope of the tangent line, the rate of change of this function. If you go back to this. So we have this function here that we're looking at the rate of change. Uh, we'll put these two points on the ones we looked at, which were that value, right? Almost, very close. Not that it matters. There's our average, there's our average uh, slope between those two things. If we want to know the instantaneous change at any given point, like say at 2 here, okay, what's the slope at 2? If you want the slope at 2, the way we're going to do this is we're going to start with the expression for the slope between two points, but then we're going to push the points closer and closer together. So what you might do is if you want the slope of the red line, you're going to put one, one point on that point, and then you're going to push this one closer and closer with the limits. You're going to write the expression for something between the two points, and then you're going to let those get pushed together and you get the slope. Whether you go from one side to the other, it doesn't matter. Okay, if you start this way, even though the actual expression of slopes higher, when you push it right together, it doesn't matter. So it, when you write the limit for this expression, it doesn't matter which side you're actually coming from. Okay. So slope of tangent equals limit of slope of secant, right? As remember, we were calling the distance between the two points h as delta x or h or whatever you want to call it approaches zero. As the distance between the two points horizontally approaches zero. So limit as I remember the expression. If you have two points here, so you have some kind of a curve. This is x. This is x plus h, and the y values this is f of x plus h, this is f of x. h is just the distance in between the two points, we've used that before, there's h. So the, first of all you write the expression for the slope between those two points. You have f of x plus h minus f of x, the two y values divided by the two x values subtracted. You can just put an h here if you want, but x plus h 
minus x. This is the slope of the secant line. The slope of the tangent line is the limit as h approaches 0. Of course, on the bottom, you can, you can simplify that. And you can just write it as what? H, right? You can just write it as H. So your your definition or what you're going to remember, you're going to use this quite a bit and you're going to end up committing it to memory here. Limit as H approaches 0, just the difference between the two function values divided by H. Okay, that's going to be the definition. It's actually going to be the definition of something called the derivative. The slope of the tangent line at any point X, if you, if you can come up with an expression for that, a function for that, that's going to be our definition of what's called the derivative. That is the focus of the first half of a calculus course, usually. 